Welcome to Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. Well, we got our beautiful K10 pickup truck in the shop here. Four-wheel drive, beefy, it's been through the ringer. But you know the good part about it is, Brian, this one's a no-brainer, man. Those pieces I had up there in the driveway and the fluid breaking out, there's even a hole there. This is going to be an easy diagnostic one for you. Yeah, it looks like a hand grenade may have gone off inside this thing. There's a hole, there's fluid, it continues to bleed. You can hear some rattle and banging. So why don't I pop this cover off and look at the evidence? Why don't you do that? You know, and we got two options at this point. We can go ahead and replace the whole differential or we can rebuild it. Today we're going to show you both of them on Tech Garage. We're going to go through the rebuild process and replace this differential with one from some Broda. It's a pretty good differential. We'll be in good shape there, but here's the whole key, man. Let's see what's uh, yeah. going on in there. Let's see. Ooh, ooh. Wow, take a look at this, Brian. Look, I'll tell you what. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, there you go. Good. Were you driving when this happened? <laughs> it's coming apart. There's no doubt about it. Sweep I mean, back up in here with a magnet. Oh yeah, we've got some more fragments there. Look at that. Absolutely. Let me bring you up to speed. We actually knew we were going to have to replace the differential because of all the damage inside of there. So we went ahead and took out the actual drive shaft. We removed the brake lines that come back. I got this one separated here. It's nice. It's an older truck. It's easy to work on. Yeah. Now we just start pulling the differential. I mean, there's really nothing to it. A couple of U-bolts, some shock absorbers. Yeah. A couple of tips though. You know, I really supported this thing well in the front, Brian, when you're lifting a truck Great like this. Idea. If you have a lift, yep. remember all your weight's in the front of this truck. There's nothing but a bed on here and a differential. Once this comes down, boom, that truck's going oh, over. It's heavy. Yeah. yeah, so we're pretty well supported. So what's your first step over there? Same thing. Just like if you're working in your driveway, you've got to have it stable at all four corners of the vehicle to tackle this project. I think for me, I'm going to go ahead and get this shock off. The upper U-bolts, I got them cracked loose. We'll get them and get the weight. Now, you've got it supported very nicely, but the weight's going to be free-floating here at that point, and we can just back it all down. Absolutely. But disconnecting everything in advance and anticipating that is a huge tip and time saver. Yeah, it will. And he's got this bar down here, some kind of track bar. I don't know. We'll just take that with it. I'm not sure if that's too necessary there. All right. We'll come through and go ahead. Let's nail these shocks. And... Okay. Right. Sometimes you have to encourage these lower mounting bolts out. This one got lucky. That came yeah. right out nicely. Okay, we've got that there free. Go. Swap yeah. sockets, U-bolts up on top. The thing is, the cake truck is a four-wheel drive series truck, so it's a nice 12-bolt differential. It's a 373 gear pattern. <laughs> Brian, once we get all those off, now we want to support it, so slow down a minute and yep. give me a chance to get caught up to you. So here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and let you give your first shot, support it, hold it. We don't know if it's going to come or not. Oh, that was yeah. a nasty one. That's what it you're going to run into. It's in nice there. you got that air, I'll tell you what. Yep. All right, so you may be free, maybe not, but let me go ahead and do this, and then we'll start manipulating it, and we'll get it out of there. sure if it's going to come down or not. Let me take a little bit of the weight off here with okay. the jack stand. Yep. I think we got everything. Oh, there, we go. there it goes, That's I'm telling good. you. That's right. right where the front of the truck would have tipped. Beautiful. Nice. Yep. All right. All right so it's going to want to roll lower. forward. All right. You got yours down? Yep. Let's just keep it even coming down. We've got to move our tables. All right. That's good. Line supported. You got the end there? Right tool for the job makes all the difference here, buddy. Right, if you're so. doing the full swap, be sure you got a lift. Well, we got our differential on the table, and Brian, we got some investigation work to do. But before we do that, let's actually take a look at the kit they sent. A whole bearing kit right here, which is cool because you got the bearings, the side, the preload bearings, you have the shims, you have the crush collars, marking compound, even the nut comes with it, and of course, a new ring and pinion. 373 gear ratio, man, we're in. Truly everything you need, but if you're a replace candidate, not a rebuild candidate, like we are, I think you're going to see why. A little bit of investigation work we got to do here. Absolutely. And you know, I got the nut loose already that holds the actual shaft in there. I'm going to pull this out. Brian, I want to find out what that gear actually came off of. So let me spin this around, see okay. if we can get the pin out. Look at that. It yep. never comes that easy. Nope. Now give it's it a good day, shove buddy. in there if you would. Are you ready? Yep. 
There you All go. Right. Look at that. There's the first. We'll get that first clip, as you call it. Nice. We'll harvest it right out of there. Harvest that guy right out. See if I can shove my. Oh, mine yep. fell. Well nice done. Day. All right. We're, we're living lucky. right. Grab okay. your axle and just Please yank out. it on out of there. there Set them down. Down Brian, here. it never fails. You get me in this axle grease, man. It's a mess. Yeah, well, we do, but we can't. <laughs> you know, right. it's interesting. There's actually a little evidence if you look at the toe there of wear. And there's a heel in the toe of that face, and you want the wear in the middle, right? right. You're going to show how that works. But even more evidence, we got a problem. For sure. Now what I'm going to do is I was going to rebuild this. I would go ahead and mark these caps. That's super important that you mark the caps and put them back in the same direction. It's just like a main cap on the engine. But I could just loosen these. I don't want to take them all the way out. Brian, you got a pry bar back there? Yeah, we do. Maybe a little trick. We'll get this out. And this may just knock that carrier out unless it's all seized in there. We don't know. There you so go. if we take this joker right here, spin it up, and there it goes. All right. Well so done. we knock it right out of there. There we go. Now what I can do is finish taking these caps off. And spider, and spider gears look respectable too. It I mean, does. I'm, I'm betting on opinion. It's in good shape. I'm hoping so. I hope we see something where yeah. somebody. Well, there's enough metal fragmentation and shavings around here to know that something very bad yep. happened in the rear end of this wow. 79. Look at that. It smells pretty good too. Yeah. All right, so when you're taking this out as well, mark the shims. Where are they going? I got, got shims to. on both sides. Very, very important. All right, look at that mess. Oh. Awesome. All right, yep. so the pinion's in there. Wow. Brian, why don't you take that yeah. nut off back there? Tell you there. what. Okay, great. And if you need, don't have a buddy to help you hold this, you can make a homemade bracket, put it right into the flange there, hold that yoke when you hit it with a gun. I've already got it cracked loose. I should yeah. be able to get it. There we go. There you go. All right, nuts awesome. off. Awesome. Now you want to use a puller to get that off. Since yep. ours is destroyed, just give it a couple taps. Yeah, but a puller's good. always in order for pulling that off. There you go, tap buddy. This, tap. Oh, it's coming right yep, out of there. Right out. Oh, yep. look at that. There you go. Hey, bingo. There, oh. <laughs> there is our missing piece. Man, that Easy is investigation brutal. in that case. Yep, and that whole thing was clunking wow. around in there, bearings the whole nine yard, crush collar. Wow. Pretty difficult to set up. Brian, I'm going to give the disclaimer. This isn't an installation video, but yet I'll give them a couple tips. Why don't you get the differential set up? I'm taking my gun and I'm doing it. Awesome. Now, if we're going to rebuild this thing, we have to go through a couple steps. And first one is sending that pinion depth. Underneath this pinion down here is a shim. It looks just like this. So what you want to do is I had to go out and get a special tool. You get a tool like this here, right here. You put it in here, the saddles, depending on the size, dial indicator on the end, and you measure how far that pinion's gonna go in. That's called pinion depth, all right? Then we're gonna do a deal called pinion preload. Now, pinion preload is actually using that crush collar you saw right there. Now, once it's crushed, you can't reuse it. So what you wanna do is you wanna put it on there, put your pinion in, and then get you an inch-pound torque wrench with some kind of beam. This one happens to be a half inch, but we'd spin it and we would watch how much preload it takes to spin that on the actual differential itself. That's called pinion preload. So you're setting up the preload, you're setting up the depth. Why do you want to do that? Well, you want the tooth pattern to match on all of it. And then we're going to look at two other measurements. One of them is the whole bearing load on the side and backlash. Well, that's what all these shims were. When we pulled the shims out, it was super important that we measured the shims. Either get you a little tag or tag them and put them back in the same spot, or you're going to have to get a shim kit and you're going to have to measure that. And I'll show you that in a second. Now, once we get it in there and we got the backlash set, we can go ahead and add a couple of shims for preload to lock that thing in there to make sure it's going to be secure. I told you it was probably a good idea to just go ahead and replace that differential. This is why it's pretty intense surgery when you get in there and you know you could have some noises as well. But come on over here with me, I'll show you what a couple of the final steps are. If you see right here on this differential, I actually have it set up to a dial indicator. I go back and forth like that. That's actually backlash. We're reading that backlash. Remember we set that earlier with that pinion going in and out. And then one of the final checks and one of the most important checks you can do, once you get it all set up, you call toothpaste contact. I take a little bit of this right here, paint it on these teeth, maybe three, four teeth, both sides, the convex and the coast side on both of these. And then what I'll do once I got it painted on there, I'll go ahead and rotate it around and I'll read the toothpaste contact. That's important. So if I come around here and get it into that pinion, make sure it goes into that pinion. I spin it around and then I'm going to look where did it contact. Now take a look at this graphic right here. This is why it's so important because if it contacts on the bottom of this tooth, you have toe contact. Up on the top, you have shim, you have heels, you have face. Just depending on which way you increase backlash, decrease backlash, or pinion shims. It's pretty difficult. So we chose to put the new Zimbrata differential in there. That's going to do the trick. Brian's underway. He's going to need some help. Man, I've got this thing looking good and the axle too.
Now, what you been doing over here? I mean, you got nowhere. Hey, I had to put a chrome differential cover on it. It's the start of a good restoration, and I want to see how good I look. Yeah, your one hair. Here, grab this joker here, get your blocks in there. Now, if you look at this right here, I'm showing you it's actually got a pitch to it. This is important because it's actually developing our angle to pinion. our pinion. Exactly. So, Brian, here's what we'll do. Let's get yours on. where you're close to get it started. Okay. All right, and uh, oh, we'll walk you back on, and baby. forth. Which way? To my way or? I can't. I got a mark here. Let me come down a little bit. In okay. the center of it. Feel Just good right too there. Too far. Yeah. Try that. There we go. All right. Perfect. Bring mine up. And yep. This is why you need two people. This thing is got massive, to. man. It's a beast. Got Look to. at that. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well done. U-bolts, buddy. Yep. We hung our U-bolts right here, which makes it a lot easier to do. may have to bend them in or out as you go. You also see that our axle's on. Of course, we're going to have to pull them out and put new brakes on. And that's pretty cool because Rock Auto set us the whole brakes, the shoes, the wheel cylinders, new drums, the whole nine yards because, you know, this one was not only as old as it is, it was pretty well toasted. They were all wet with axle fluid and everything else, so it's a must to replace that. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing that's significant, we got to, you know, get this thing topped off with fluid. We've got some spicer friction modifier, which will be really helpful in the break-in period. And everybody's got different theories on break-ins, but here's the deal. Take it easy. Go three to 500 miles, replace the differential fluid lubricant again, check for metal fragmentation in there, make sure there's no damage being done, but take it easy on all that so much steel that John showed you, this heat that you've got to dissipate. So take it easy on all that. It's like an engine. I mean, it's going to go ahead and it's going to start to wear out after time or wear the patterns in there and you got to get that fluid back out of there. Brian, this is in good shape. Now just reverse the procedure, put the shocks in there, torque them all to specifications, make sure they're good and snug. And then Brian, you know what? We're ready to take this thing out. I know there's some mud out there, man. We're gonna give it a little test drive and make sure it's good to go. I can't wait. Yep, you guys stick around. Garage Ed is up next. We got an awesome segment for you. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com.